What's up folks, in this video I'm going to give you 5 tips that will help you to improve your street photography. And if you want to learn more and improve your photography, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. Alright, so tip number one is give yourself an assignment. Many of the great street photographers all shot similar things in a variety of different ways. For example, saw lighter often blocked the frame with things, taking up a lot of negative space, and the subject only had a small amount of real estate in the frame. And photographers like Bruce Gildon shoot extremely close-up, candid pictures of people in the street with a flash, so it's very in your face. When you're out shooting street photography, it can be really easy to get overwhelmed by all of the stuff that's happening around you and the variety of different potential subjects there are in the streets. And so giving yourself assignments can help you to cut through that noise and focus in on certain aspects of the streets. And this doesn't mean if you see a great potential photo somewhere else that you shouldn't go and shoot that just because it doesn't fit in with your assignment. It's just more of an exercise and observation and it helps you to sort of get started as well. So if you don't see anything else immediately, you have something else that you can focus in on. It also has the added bonus that you can end up creating a photo set or a body of work that all has a similar feeling to it or a similar subject that you've shot in a variety of different ways. And also since you're shooting the same thing and you have to shoot it in different ways to make different pictures, it can actually push you creatively to think about other ways of shooting it that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of had you only shot it once or twice. So for example, a common one is to shoot pictures of people with umbrellas. In a lot of cities it rains a lot and people are carrying umbrellas everywhere. So if you can shoot umbrellas in as many different ways as you can, you could turn that into a sort of photo series of just umbrellas. And that's a really great way to sort of start building up a body of work that's kind of cohesive. And you could also have several different assignments running at the same time. So if one day you're shooting umbrellas and the next day it's dry and nobody has umbrellas out, you can pick one of your other assignments and try and focus more in on that. And a good way to pick out different assignments is something that's common in your city. So if you have a lot of pigeons around your city, you could do a series on pigeons in different places or doing different things or whatever you can, as many different ways that you can photograph a pigeon. You could do a photo series on public transport. If you're always on the bus or on the train, how many different ways can you shoot pictures on public transport? Are there any interesting characters on there? You could shoot pictures only through windows so you can find different types of reflections and maybe people sitting on the other side of those windows. You could shoot only with artificial light if you're out at night time and whatever else you can think of. There's limitless ideas for photo assignments that you can give yourself. All right, tip number two is steal like an artist. There's an author called Austin Cleon who I stole that title from. And steal like an artist means that basically all artists steal work but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. You're not just completely ripping off other artists' work, but you're sampling pieces of other artists and stealing little bits of their work to make it into something that becomes your own. So in your street photography, you need to be looking at other photographers, look at other artists, it doesn't necessarily have to be photography, and find out what parts of their work that you like and figure out what elements you can take from that to incorporate into your own work. And by all means, try to replicate someone else's style for a little while, but don't try and pass that off as your own ideas. Try and learn from it and then incorporate that into your own work. And the more people's work that you study and pay attention to, the more broadly your work can be influenced. And definitely don't expect this to be something that happens overnight. I've been paying attention to a whole bunch of other artists for the last three years, and I'm only just starting to feel like I'm finding my own sort of style now. Tip number three is to make time for photography. One thing that I found slowed my street photography development down 
was that I didn't go out specifically just to shoot street photos. I would do it while I was doing other things. So if there was an event on in Centre City and I was going to it with my wife, I'd carry my camera along and from time to time I might get the odd good photo. But most of the time I was too busy talking or paying attention to something else to really get great photos. And also sometimes things like that are just happening at the wrong time of day, the light's not very good and really what you want to do is be out when the light is going to be best, when it's in the right position for that area and oftentimes the best light just happens round about golden hour, sort of sunrise or sunset, sometimes in the middle of the day depending on where you are but um, yeah usually the light's too harsh at that time of day and it makes it a little bit harder to find good pictures unless you're playing the shadows in which case middle of the day works great but the point is i found that when i started to go out and shoot alone and find time specifically to go out and shoot photography my photos started to improve much quicker than they had in the past because I wasn't distracted by anything else. I was only thinking about the shots that I was taking and how I could make them better. Tip number four is to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I get that this is a really cliche statement, but it's literally the best thing I've got to explain that point in one heading. And basically, if you're out shooting street photography and you feel comfortable, then either you've got nerves of steel or you're not growing as a photographer or improving. Or the shot that you're about to take is not actually going to be that great of a shot. I've always found that the times when I've improved my photography, when I've took a step forward or when I've got a shot that I'm really happy with, I was terrified that something was going to happen that I was gonna miss the shot or I felt really uncomfortable in the place that I was or that people were judging me or something like that. Those were always the times when my photography was getting better. And I wish that wasn't the case because it kind of sucks at the time, but afterwards it's pretty rewarding. And you might even find that at first, just walking around in public with your camera makes you feel kind of uncomfortable, but that's just your first hurdle to get past. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with that, and then you'll be able to move on to something else that makes you a little bit more uncomfortable and continue to push yourself. One of my biggest hurdles was caring about what other people think about me. And the older I've got, the less I've really cared about it. But there's still that element when I'm taking pictures in public that people are looking at me funny or think I'm a kind of crazy person or weirdo or whatever. But I just have to keep sort of talking to myself that none of these people know me. They don't know what I'm doing and they don't really care what I'm doing. They're just gonna walk on and avoid me and they'll have forgotten about me in like five minutes from now. So what they actually think doesn't really matter as long as I'm not doing any harm to anybody. Tip number five is to know your camera. I cannot stress how important it is to be familiar and completely comfortable with your camera and all of its controls. You need to spend a lot of time getting used to what buttons you need to press, what controls you need to use to get your camera to do what you want it to do and figure out what the best mode that your camera should be in for you to get the type of street photography that you want to make. Even down to learning what direction your command dials need to roll in order to get a brighter or darker exposure or faster shutter speed or whatever it is you need it to do. Figure out which settings in your menu system that you most commonly have to go and find and see if your camera will let you attach those settings to a custom button outside your camera. So you just have to press one button and it'll take you straight to those settings. And once you really know your camera inside and out, it'll just get out of your way and you won't have to think about it and it'll just allow you to pay attention to what's happening around you and to shoot photography without trying to fiddle around with your camera and wonder if you have the settings right or if you're doing the right thing. It'll just work and you'll know it's working and you won't have to worry about it. As an example, this is one of the cameras that I use for work. Generally, the way you change the ISO on this, on this Canon camera is you press this ISO button here and then you roll the button that would be your shutter button to change the ISO. And then you either press that or press that again and it brings it back to normal. That always really annoyed me and then I figured out that you could change this set button to change your ISO. So I'd hold down set and then roll the shutter button 
and then for me that takes one of the steps of like pressing a button and then moving my finger to roll the, the command dial. And that made the whole process simpler for me and it helped the camera to get out of my way while I was shooting weddings and I didn't really have to think about it as much anymore. To the point now where I take somebody else's camera and I keep doing that as if it's gonna change the ISO and it drives me insane. And I've not thought about how to end this video. Bonus tip, tip number six, is you need to go out and shoot a lot. One of the best ways to get better at photography is just to shoot loads of photos. Even if they're terrible photos, even if you're not out shooting street photography, just practice photography at home. If you see interest in light, take a picture of it. If you see something interesting happening, try and photograph it. And in doing that, you'll figure out how to make your pictures look better. Try and review them, see what you don't like about them, what you do like about them, and gradually over time, you'll just intuitively start shooting better photos and knowing when there's a good photo in front of you. All right, and that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've got another tip that maybe I didn't include that you think would be better for people. If you're interested in the gear that I use for street photography, check out the links down in the description. My website's down there as well. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.